There are proteins that have SH2 or PTB domains that will bind to these receptor tyrosine kinase. So SH2 stands for SRC homology 2 and PTB stands for phosphotyrosine binding. So there are four different classes. So I've drawn four different tyrosine kinases here to illustrate these different classes. Um, there are four classes that have these domains and interact with RTKs and I'm going to draw each one of them here. So the first type that we're going to look at is an adapter protein. So adapter proteins. So here we might have something like this. You have a phosphate over here on, on this. You have this little phosphate right here that might interact with this molecule here that has some sort of SH2 domain. So this one right here that I'm going to draw is called a GRAB or GRB2, but I'm just going to call it a GRAB2. So this is a GRB2. This will associate with, it will bind to the RTK and then will bind to something else to hold everything in place. So one of the, one of the ones that it might bind to commonly is this thing called the SOS. So you might have this, this circle right here. This is your SOS uh, protein, and then it will, if I need to extend this a little bit here, this uh, lipid membrane, and then we have this interacting with this RAS, which is very important. So you have your RAS GDP here. So this is a RAS uh, GTP that is associated with this SOS, and it holds everything in place. So RAS, which I will talk about in, in the next couple of videos, the different RAS pathways is very important in current cancer research, and you'll see why in those videos. So this is the first type of, of uh, protein that will interact with the uh, receptor tyrosine kinase. The second type that we're going to look at is a docking protein. So this one here will be a docking protein. And it will have the PTB domain. So if we draw this here, this little thing will have another phosphate on it right here. You have your phosphate and that will interact with this molecule here with this PTB domain like this. Looks something like that. So it's this molecule here that has the P2B domain and this one here that I've drawn, we're going to imagine that this is what is called IRS. So docking proteins have their own tyrosine residues that can be phosphorylated. So they stay attached to the RTK and they have their own tyrosine. So they, they can turn on other proteins. So if we look here, we might have a couple of phosphates right here. So this is a phosphate here and this is a phosphate here and it might have one on the other side as well. And it might activate something like this, uh, this PIP or this PI3 or PIP3 or maybe it'll activate uh, SHIP2 or something like that. These different molecules, you could just to understand the concept, you could just pretty much make up any name you want that this thing would activate. So it's kind of like an electrical outlet that has more plugs than just two, right? So it can activate all these different proteins. So it could activate another protein over here that is, you know, snake one or something like that. And I'm just making up names at this point, but it, it, it's like one of those power outlets that has multiple, multiple uh, docking sites for these proteins to be activated. And that is why it's called the docking protein. Next, we have what is called the transcription factors, which is a member of the STAT family. So these are transcription factors here. So the STAT family, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about that in a sec, but I just want to explain this first. So once again, there is our phosphate group on this molecule here. There's our phosphate group. It will activate this STAT, trans, this, uh, stat transcription factor here. So if we have this STAT transcription factor, Here, this will come and it will activate a, what is called a STAT 
dimer. So there's two of these little stat molecules that have been activated, and then they will go in to the, to the nucleus here and act as transcription factors in the nucleus. Um, so once they, once they are phosphorylated and they become a dimer, they'll go into the nucleus and turn on genes that are supposed to make stuff. And these stat proteins, uh, these stat factors, are, are really, really involved in uh, immune responses. So they're important for any type of immune response. And once again, I'm going to relate this to cancer research. And in immunotherapy research, these, these stat proteins are, are very important. So last but not least, we have signaling uh, enzymes. So phospholipase C here would be my example signaling enzymes so here they activate following binding and they might activate something like this so I'm going to draw a couple of, of phosphate groups here like that and once again I will use my examples from above this would be pretend this is ship 2 um, and this is PI3K and then this one would be phospholipase C so we're just going to put PC for that so these ones um, you, you have your lipid kinase here your phosphatase and they they activate these different enzymes so phospholipase C can be activated here so I want to talk briefly about these these different adapter proteins in more of a, a detailed manner now so uh, adapter proteins and scaffolding proteins, they function as linkers that enable two or more signaling proteins to become joined together as a part of a signaling complex. Uh, adapter proteins that have the SH2 domain and one or more additional protein-protein interaction domains. So as you can see here, this one will interact here and then here as well. So the GRAB2 contains the SH2 domain and then two SH3 domains, which just stands for SRC homology 3. And um, the SH3 domains of the GRAB2 will bind constitutively to other proteins, so it will hold these, these SOS in place. Um, and then they also bind to phosphorylated tyrosine residues within what is called a T tier X ASN motif. And those cons consequently, those tyrosine phosphorylation of that on the RTK results in translocation of the GRAB2 SOS or GRAB2 GAB, which is another example, from the cytosol to a receptor, which is present at the plasma membrane. The STAT proteins, like I said, I wanted to discuss this in more in depth as well. So the transcription factors that belong to the STAT family play an important role in the function of the immune system. And stats that contain the SH2 domain together with some tyrosine phosphorylation site that can act as a binding site for another stat molecule right here. Um, the tyrosine phosphorylation of stat SH2 binding sites is situated within a dimerized uh, receptor leads to recruitment of other stat proteins. Um, upon association with this receptor complex, the tyrosine residues in the stat proteins are phosphorylated. And then as a result, they will interact with other ones here. So it's only dimers that, um, not, not monomers here, it's just dimers that are, will be able to move into the nucleus where they can stimulate transcription factors. Um, other ones here like signaling enzymes, they include protein kinases, protein phosphatases, lipid kinases, phospholipases, and GTPase activating proteins. Uh, when they're equipped with SH2 domains, these enzymes associate with activated RTKs and turn on directly or indirectly as a consequence of this association. Um, there are three general mechanisms that have been identified by which these enzymes here will um, act, uh, how they're activated following their association with the RTK. So they can be activated simply as a result of translocation within the membrane. Um, they can be activated through an allosteric mechanism, so a change in conformation and they can also be regulated by phosphorylation. So those are the different proteins that, the different types of proteins that associate or molecules that associate with the uh, receptor tyrosine kinase. And these are all very important for different responses and processes that go on in the human body or in the, in the, uh, the uh, any type of organism, multicellular organism body.